up you guys we are live um i said hey i'm gonna go live over here on youtube and talk with y'all um and stuff like that or next year i think we're going to be doing uh the youtube full time so uh we thank you so very much so if you want to make sure that happen make sure you contribute to the show all right so we could definitely do it full time over here on youtube full time so I could be interacting with y'all and post videos and posting and everything like that. I want to give a special shout out to my team. So we're teaching me how to post little clips. So that's been really, really good. And I really want to talk to y'all because a lot of people be asking about my YouTube career. And I want to talk about that. And then we're going to dive into these topics. And so the reason why I want to do YouTube full time is because I want to entertain you guys full time. Shout out to my shirt. Okay. Brooklyn, New York. So we definitely got New York. Coming out, definitely going to Brooklyn. Uh, but I want to talk about my YouTube career because I think a lot of people don't understand where I come from. But I remember I would have my camera, my little digital camera, and I would be in the parties asking the Kardashians, not the, the celebrity Kardashian. Let me break this down to you. In Chicago, they will have the gay family scene. So if you have a family of gays, you can call them the Kardashian family. My family was called the Prescott family. You have this family called the Monroe family. And you would have all type of people, the, Bal the Baldwin family. It's like different families and they would give them names. So I would have my camera and I would interview people at the party. You know, all the type of was going on. And if I find out you were cheating on your boyfriend, I, I would bring that question up. If I found out you were positive, I would bring that question up on the show. And so those are the things that I used to do, you know, growing uh, into this business. Um, and so, and then one day I saw that Sonny, his name was Sonny Monroe was his name. And he had a radio show in, on Chicago, internet radio show on blog talk radio. And he would have all the gays will call into his show and they were, you know, you know, call into the show and he would give a recap of a house party that got shut down or a fight or whatever. And so I started my uh, blog talk radio show on blog talk radio. And I started that um, the Wiley show. And so when we would have shows going on at the same time, nobody would listen to our show. Sonny had the audience. Sonny had the people calling in. Sonny had the girls call into the show. I did not have the girls uh, calling into my show at all. And so Sonny was like beating me in the ratings. And so I would do uh, the show and I would talk about, you know, gay stuff and stuff like that. But I was very boring, I would say. I wasn't upbeat like I am now. Okay. I wasn't interactive and I really didn't have an audience. So I, in return, started to interview the gay artists, gay rappers like the Freaky Boys, gay rappers like Pretty Boy Rich, gay rappers like Ike, gay rappers like Darius. At least he was a gay singer. And so I would interview the gay artists. And so I would bring the gay artists on my show and I would play their music. Some of it was trash. Some of it was good. And this was for Saucy Santana. This was for before Little Nas X. This was for any of that. And so I would interview them, you know, on my blog talk radio show. And it would mainly be me and the guests. And so we would do these shows we would entertain and it would just be me and a guest right and i was gaining my traps and so when many people would say to me you know while you give 
you do great interviews is because in, in my come up, I would interview artists. That's all I did. It would be me and artists. I would ask them questions about their sex life. I've asked them if they're top or bottom. I've asked them, do they dush? I've asked them about their writing process, etc. And so I did that. And so, uh, and then eventually I was on Facebook and I started doing a Facebook show and I ran into, at, during that time, I think it was 2015 or 2016, I ran into Armand Wiggins on social media. He was a guy, a bottom, top, bottom, verse. I think he's verse. He was entertaining. He was doing all that stuff. So we connected. And so I wanted to interview uh, Armand Wiggins uh, because he was uh, doing a show on, before he transitioned, Jacob Kahainu, and that is now is called The Gossip Girl. He was doing a show, uh, My Shady Rainbow, and I saw this guy. He's very entertaining, true talent. And so even before that, we connected, and we would get on the phone, and I would interview him, and we would ask these these, these questions. And then he would go live uh, on his on his on his Facebook page, and, and and garner a big audience, right? And so I would go on his show, and I would argue with different people. This was before StreamYard. So back in the day, in order to bring multiple people on your show, you would have to go to Uvu. Uvu was an app like Skype, but Uvu was where you could bring multiple parties on Uvu. And so our mind would hook it up, and we would be on there with different guests, and I would be dragging and roasting and gagging. And then we, then me and our mind, we started another show, the Bullshit Bell Show. We we was going to do this show, and we started teaming up for that. Very entertaining. I was over the top. I was putting Vaseline on my face. I was blowing up a condom like a balloon. Just, just really, really comedy, right? And so uh, and then we get over here onto YouTube, like really. Uh, I, I get on. I, but before this, this was when I was like, you know, the Scorpion Show. This is when the Scorpion Show was popping, and I would just be a fan of the Scorpion Show. And then I would start a YouTube channel, but nobody would come to my YouTube channel. And then one day, I met Jonathan Flakes. And uh, we we connected a relationship and we started to produce videos on YouTube. And then people asked him, well, Wally, what happened to all those videos? Let me tell you. So I was in the church. Uh, I, was, I attended a church, True Church uh, of Holiness um, in Chicago, Illinois, on 57 Indiana, 5735 South Indiana. It is a church on the south side, still exists. My pastor, my uncle is a pastor, Bishop Melvin Cartwright. And so he would preach messages and he was like you know you need to delete them videos that's the devil you're doing a devil's work so i was conflicted and many people will call me a flip-flopper but let me tell you um and so he was like you need to delete these videos you need to delete that you know so i would delete videos and i was torn because i wanted to be in a church but i also wanted to be out in the world i wanted to be out in the world and experience the world so i would go to church and i would get saved and i would delete the videos i would delete my youtube channel and then I would go back in the world, do my videos again. So I was like torn, you know what I'm saying? I didn't know what direction to take because I had this, I had my uncle, Bishop Melvin Conrad, saying you're on your way to hell, you need to be delivered. And then you have the world, and you have Jonathan Flakes out here popping his booty up there, you know, doing all of this stuff in a world that I was so amazed. I didn't know. I, I was like, oh my God, this is just amazing. And so I was like torn of both, of both worlds. And so... And then I started, and then one day uh, I was talking with Jonathan. He was like, you know, you really need to take, you know, YouTube series. You need to stop deleting your videos. You're very entertaining. I never knew I was entertaining. I never knew I had supporters. And so I remember when, um, back in the day, I didn't even know people listened to me on blogs or radio. So I moved into this uh, apartment on, 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 the, on the south side in the Wild Hundreds in Roseland. And I moved into the studio apartment, and so the people gas had to come in and do and hook up my gas or whatever. And I didn't answer, and then eventually he came back, and he said, "You know why I came back? Because I listened to one of your shows, and you were talking about being a six foot two bottom." And I heard that episode, and I was so shocked. I didn't know then people were, you know, listening to my show back then. I didn't know it. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I, I didn't think nobody listened to my show. And so we, even it was an older gay gentleman that worked with People Gas, was literally talk, talking about when I was saying that you can't be, it's it's unacceptable to be a six foot two man being a bottom because you tall, you know? And I remember that conversation and he verbatim was talking about that conversation, you know, off my show. But I didn't know my true caller. I didn't know this was something that I wanted to do. So he said that. 
And so fast forward it. And so when I got into YouTube, into the YouTube game, and I start into it, and it so happened. Give me a second. I got a phone call. Hello, I'm sorry. I'm live. I didn't. Is everything okay? Okay, I, I'm gonna I'm call you back once I'm done. Okay. All right. So, right. So I got onto YouTube and then I just found the beef sector, right? The Jay Wilsons, the Five Bays, the VS, the Sean Bradley, all of these people. And I just so happened to be in the beef sector and in the beef sector, roasting and gagging with the people in the beef sector, right? I was heavily in the beef sector. This was the sector all I had was me and my cell phone, okay? It was just me and my cell phone, and I would talk to the audience. And I would captivate an audience, and so we start averaging one person in the chat, five people in the chat, 10 people in the chat, 15 people in the chat, and they would just listen to me, and I would leave work on my cell phone, leave work, you know, roasting the gaggle with, uh, with Sean Bradley, roasting the gaggle with the Jay Wilsons, roasting the gaggle with the Five Babes, Roasting and gagging with the VS, and I would just be really dragging, you know, these people and guarding an audience, not knowing that I was building an audience, right? And I was in the B sector really, 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 really heavy. And then an opportunity came across my desk to do a reality show uh, with me, Sean Bradley, Jay Wilson, uh, Five Babe, uh, uh, all, all, all these, these people in the B sector. And so, uh, I was in Atlanta. I was in Atlanta. We was in this mansion, in this in this mansion, and some just hit me. I was outside, and I said, "Listen, I want to do something else because I want to broaden my audience, right? I I, I want to broaden my audience, and I don't think I would be able to garner and broaden my audience just in the B sector, right? So I left Atlanta, came back to Texas, and I started focusing on celebrity gossip, right?" I started focusing on celebrity gossip. I started to get away from the blessed walk-ins, the Jay Wilson, surely but surely, I started talking about trending topics. And so when I started talking about trending topics, most of the people in the B sector, they left me. They did not follow me on this journey because the B sector, they only follow YouTubers that beef with other YouTubers. So a lot of them, they did not follow me on my journey to the celebrity gossip role. They didn't follow me. They literally... Did not they abandoned me, right? And so I lost some moderators that moderated me, and they said, "Listen, I'm not. I love the. I love the beef. I don't. I, I don't like celebrity gossip. I like YouTube beef. So I lost that. And so, um, and so I said, man, let me see if I can do both. Then I tried to do both, and then some told me stick with trending news. So I started sticking with the trending news. And then one day I get a phone call for somebody in the B sector and said, Wiley, you are officially out of the B sector because your videos don't even come down my recommendation. And all I watch is B sector people. So my, my recommendation, I knew I was officially out of the B sector when all of my, my recommendation was nobody from the B sector. The Jay Wilson wasn't coming down my timeline. The Sean Bradley wasn't coming down my timeline. The Brianna wasn't coming down my timeline. The Tracy wasn't coming down my timeline. The Jay Wilson wasn't coming down my timeline. They were no longer coming down my timeline anymore. Now I was getting people like Dormont Wiggins, Storm Monroe, Tasha K, Hollywood Unlocked, the Impressive, you know, all of those channels was coming down my timeline. And so now um, when I when I look at the channels that's coming down my timeline and then, and then my chat started to change, it, it, it was it was no longer people in the big sector that I was used to. It's I started to garner new people and they started to come on my channel. And so and that's what I, I did. And a lot of people, they was like, you know, why did you leave the big sector? The reason why I left is because I couldn't get above 5,000 subscribers. It's like I reached my max in the B sector. Most people in the B sector, they don't have a lot of subscribers. They, they're not nowhere near to 30,000. And for those that do have almost 30,000, they wasn't just doing beef. They was doing celebrity gossip. They was doing reality show reviews. So they, they typically under that 10,000 threshold. Once I left the B sector, I started to um I, I I I started to get more subscribers. 
The thing that I learned from the B sector, that B sector garnered me thick skin. That's when I got my chops, the roast and the gag. I, I'm not, I don't care if you block me. I don't care if you try to dox me because I've been doxxed. I've people came to my family church, people contact my family. So a lot of that stuff doesn't bother me because I experienced that in the B sector. I experienced that. I'm gonna forget it. It was a YouTuber by the name of Five Eight. She decided to go to my family church because she decided to wear in her underwear. She decided uh, during that time I had a website out. And so she was in her underwear and it had some stains in it, it had some stains in it. And so and she was smaller back then. And so I screen recorded that part and posted it on my website. And so I was starting to go viral. And she said, Wiley, take it in or I'm going to go to your family or I'm going to go to your family church. So I did not take down the video with her in them, in them panties with the stains. I didn't take down the video. So she got in her car. True story. She got in her car, drove to 5735 South Indiana and in Chicago, Illinois, and drove to my family church when my uncle was the pastor when my grandmother's the mother in the church. And so she drove there and she was at the back of the church. And then there was another guy named QB. They didn't let him in the church because he's an openly gay man and he's very feminine. So I guess they probably thought he was my boyfriend or, or something. They didn't let him in due to the fact that Phi Babe is a black woman. They let her in. So she went there and she recorded it and she did all, 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 uh, all of that. And she said, she, she said the reason why she's going to go to the family church is because she was going to report to my family, to my uncles or what I'm doing on YouTube. Like they don't know that I do YouTube. So while she was going to the family church, I contact the family church. I con I posted the, the church on my website. I let them know that she was coming. So she went. And so, um, and so, for people that don't know and say, how many times are you going to tell this story? I'm going to tell this story as many times as possible because that's what I'm going to do over here at the Wally Show. Mr. Smalls, I'm going to always tell my story, okay? So she came to the family church and she was there. And then she later on, she regret coming, going to the family church. She said, I regret. It was stupid. Mind you, she's older than me. She's like 10 years older than me. And she went there, and I was like, "Wow!" And and right, and a light bulb just blinked in. I'm like, "Let me get into a whole nother sector because this is this is like, what is going on?" I wasn't heard about it or pressed about it because I'm like, "This is good publicity, good publicity for the church. You get another tax, uh, a tie payer to go to the church. It is what it is. They don't like women preachers. They don't like women wearing pants. So I don't know how she would actually be." how she would be welcome because she is a woman preacher. They don't like women preachers. They don't like women wearing pants. They don't like women in, in, in a true church. They don't believe in women should, if you get married and get divorced, you can't get remarried. Your husband must die in order for you to get remarried. So it's a lot of things that true church holding is. That's what they believe. So she went there. So I'm like, maybe she would go there and get delivered. Maybe she would go there and get on the altar and get delivered. But she went there just to embarrass me. So she went live and she said, where's Wiley? She literally said that where's Wiley on the, on her phone. Like she was live in the church. I can hear my uncle in Sunday school and you can hear her Wiley. She just literally said this. And I'm like, what? I'm like, this is, she's in my family church. So what I did, I went down the street to the place to give me a wig. I literally was a, I think I debuted Marquita, the, the cross-eyed diva. I put on a wig. I put on a makeup. I think I, I brought Marquita out that day because it didn't bother me. Because if say, if you go to the family church uh, that do not, do not believe that gays are going to heaven. If you go there, that's you, you go in there. Right. So I can't be mad because I said something and I, and I wasn't going to take it down. So she went. And so I heard like people in the church, I hear family members and I hearing people that I know that know me very well. And so my uncle, my uncle was there. And so, uh, that's just how that all went. So that's just how the B sector was. And then people started a nasty rumor. Okay. We're going to talk about it but in the B sector. So they started a nasty rumor. They started to say that I uh, sexually abused my grandmother. They put that rumor out in the B sector. They put it on Lipstick Alley and they put it in the B sector. Right. A nasty, nasty rumor that I sexually assaulted my grandmother. Put that rumor out. So. I was good friends with VS. So I had VS 
to call my uncle, Bishop Melvin Cotwright. So VS, and I still have that recording, she called Bishop Melvin Cotwright and she recorded it. And then she called me. She said, Marquise. I mean, no, she said, Wiley, I shouldn't have did that. Oh my gosh, I feel bad calling him. Oh my gosh, why? Because why? So I heard, I heard the recording. So my uncle was like, My my mother was never raped. Who would make something like that? Uh, and then and then he said, I'm gonna pray for you. And it and all of this, like it was like, wow. And so I called my mother and I brought my mother on the show. And she said, what? They said, this is not true. I brought her on to clear it out. And so that's how the B sector was. So when things come up now, when King Payne, when he started a whole series on the Wiley show, it didn't bother me because I dealt with that in the B sector. Didn't bother that. And they, they hit below the belt in the B sector. And if you ain't tough, you can't deal with it. So they thought I was going to go around and just cry. Never happened. I, I didn't cry. It was a it was a rumor. It was just a false rumor that went out there and it taught me a lesson to de develop thick skin. And so my mother came on and we interviewed my mother. Yes, we did. That was the first time my mother ever um, came on the Wiley show. She came on our show. We interviewed her. And me and my mother really wasn't talking like that. And so I cried in the interview. I teared up because I'm hearing my mother's voice. And I remember the tarnish and just, we talked about our mom Wiggins because during that time he interviewed my mom and, and we was just, I was trashing my mother. I was trashing my sister. I was just trashing all of that. And then Armand, he started to, he started to say, well, that's what the church said. And the church never said that. And so I'm saying this because I dealt with all that stuff uh, in the beef sector, right? I, I dealt with all that in the beef sector and that's what I, I dealt with. And it, it gave me like thick, it gave me thick skin. And I, and I so appreciate the people that remember what I've been through. You know what I'm saying? Remember all the stuff that I've been through in that beef sector. And so I, I left it and I started doing celebrity gossip, started doing other things. And my mother said some interview and she said something I will never forget. She said, you have to learn how to get out of people, meaning that you cannot allow what people say to get to you because they're going to always lie on you. It is what it is. In this business, they're going to think of lies. They're going to think safe stuff. And it's the business that you want to be in. So you got to know how to take it and move on with your life and don't let it bother you. And so that's what I learned from that. And so it, it bothered me. So it was a good thing. I was able to talk to my mother. I was able to have communication with my mother. And then in the uh, when I was a part, uh, I think the beef sector, or, or I wasn't a part of the beef sector, I went and I finally was able to visit my grandmother. Now, uh, I recorded that because I had my Patreon people. If y'all can find that video, please send it to me. If y'all can find that video, if you was on my Patreon, if you can find that video, please send it to me. But I remember this was before my grandmother had a stroke. When I went to Chicago, this is the time me and my grandma, we wasn't talking. It was bad blood because I was trashing the church, like disrespecting the church members. I was saying a whole bunch of stuff. So we haven't really talked. And so went to Chicago and I said, I need to see my grandmother. This is before she had a stroke. Went up and then I, and then some told me to go back. And then my sister opened the door. Some Marquise, come on upstairs. So that was the time when Mother Price, a mother of a of church that I grew up with, she passed away. That was around that time. And so we we went inside there, and my grandmother said, I love you, but I did not like how you talked about the church. And I said, I, I'm sorry, grandmother. I apologize for what I did. And then, like, after that, after that talk, that was my last time seeing my grandmother before she had a stroke, before she was in a wheelchair. That was the time she was walking. She went in a wheelchair. She didn't have a stroke. And then after that, you know, uh, a couple of months later, she had a stroke. And so we was able to, and then, we was able to have that conversation. And so now I'm able to talk to my grandmother. I'm able to communicate with her and just, you know what I'm saying? Really, really great to be able to, you know, talk to, to talk to her because it was a time where we wasn't talking. So, uh, at all. And it, it was, it was really, it was really, really bad. I was at, I was at a bad place with my family because I was the type of person that I was going through a lot of, a lot of crap and I was hurt. And sometimes when you bottle up all these feelings, you just let everybody have it. 
and I was cussing everybody out. I was I was talking about church members. I was talking about everybody. I was talking about my uncle. He was a pastor. I was just going off on everybody. And I was so glad that, that now I can able to tell y'all this story and bring it back to y'all and tell y'all uh, this story because I think people need people need to hear it. And so, you know, I, I said, I said, man, I'm, I'm going to talk to y'all on YouTube. So I appreciate the B sector. I appreciate what they taught me, the people. I love them. I love the Sean Bradleys. I love the Five Babes. I love the VS whenever she returns back to YouTube. I love uh, Rico reports. I love Tracy. I love Jay Wilson, Timothy Blaine. I love, you know, uh, QB of the Midwest. I love all of them, you know what I'm saying? Because they have all taught me something uh, to become great uh, in this in, in this YouTube community because that's what I got my chops. I don't look down to the B sector. Some people call it the ghetto sector. I used to call it the Section A sector of YouTube. But again, that sector taught me a lot. I've learned how to become a personality due to that sector. And that reality show that was taped like y'all only seen Atlanta. That's all I'm gonna say. Y'all only seen Atlanta, but a clip of Atlanta, but you you didn't see the other stuff of that taping. So whenever that do come out, it's gonna blow your mind because that's the only y'all y'all only saw a, a snippet of Atlanta, not even all of Atlanta, but a snippet of Atlanta. Y'all didn't see the rest of the stuff that was taped. So uh, whenever that do come out, we pray that we get a deal and it comes out and get the green light and everything like that because that was a good good opportunity. And so that that opportunity, that opportunity taught me about the business. And I started talking with people in in the business. And I said, okay, I'm gonna take this YouTube serious. And I really, really came really, really hard. It really, really hard. It taught me that it just taught me a lot. And so when Sean posted that clip, I was receiving so many phone calls. Um, I I I, rec I received so many phone calls of people saying, "Oh my gosh, when is the show gonna drop? Like this is incredible!" And like I'm like, "Wow, I don't know." Uh, whatever it do, uh, it is what it is. I'm definitely looking forward to it. But I was so glad to be a part of it because what it taught me, it taught me like man to dream bigger. You know what I'm saying? To dream bigger, and then the people that was a part of it, um, just to dream bigger. And and I've I've learned some I learned some good some good powerful people like people always say show no show but what i the people that i met behind the scenes see y'all talking about show no show show ain't gonna show all i didn't get into that drama i appreciate the people that i met the millionaires okay that i met people that's in the industry people that's behind the scenes i appreciate that and those people know who they are so I appreciate that for, for even asking me to be a part of something like that. So y'all can say show no show, show ain't gonna show, show what you can say whatever. But I I or the show show show. I appreciate the people in the back, the behind the scenes people. I appreciate that experience, and I put I I did my job. Okay, they did. And they show a snippet of the show show show. But they didn't show all of it. So I, I'm just going to say that I can't get into the details. I wish I could. But I would tell you this. When it's light camera action, it's a it's the totally different wilder when that camera is on. And I understand. I get it. With, it's like a, it is like high. It's a, that adrenaline. Like when that camera, whoosh. Like, but y'all didn't see that part. So. That's all I'm going to say. All right. <laughs> but I appreciate the people in the back. I appreciate the people that I talk to. I appreciate that. People, you would be shocked of the people that watch this show. And I appreciate that. And so I didn't, I didn't trash it. I don't care if the show never see the light of day. I appreciate the experience. I appreciate traveling to Florida. I appreciate traveling to Atlanta. I appreciate traveling to Vegas. And that taught me how to really say, okay, let me meet my subscribers in Vegas. So I appreciate that. And so for the people that left the show and trashed the show, that's them. They didn't understand the business and that's their experience. But my experience, nothing but love. 
nothing. I appreciate the experience. I appreciate the people in club chat. Appreciate them. I just appreciate the people that I met. You know what I'm saying? And if it ever do come out, it's going to be a good product because I think like it's a it's 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 a good it's a good show. It, it's 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 really really good. I just think people. I would say this to my castmates or people that no longer castmates, former castmates, that you got to stay with it in the long haul. I think people want an instant success, and that's no things how I work in industry. Uh, when I look at, I I've known Whoopi Goldberg. She just released. They just released this movie Teal, but it took her about. 12, 13 years to get the movie green light. Um, it took another producer 20 years to get a green light. So you got to be on the long haul. You're not just because a show is there, you don't get it's, it, it takes time to get it developed. We have the we have the pandemic. It give it give it time. So I I told the people, I said, listen, I'm gonna take a seat. I <laughs> <wherever you're, laughs> I'm here for the long world. And I think the people that left, they was only they wanted instant just right now. And I knew. By learning and just learning the business, that it may happen in one, it may happen in two years, it may happen in three years, it may happen in four years. But you have to thank you. You have to learn how to trust. You got to learn how to uh, trust uh, the uh, the process. You, you know, you got to learn how to trust the process. And I never want to trash the producers because let's say for instance, like say for instance, if this doesn't work, but that producer might have another opportunity. For Wiley, and I never want to trash show because it may be another opportunity because it was a good experience for me. It was a great experience because if I put on a sh uh, for this, like it was a great, it was a great experience, and so I greatly appreciate. And they know who they are because I thank them. I greatly appreciate them um, for for their support and their love and and their honor and just just being in that space because many people think that I can't be in that space. <laughs> but I can. And I said, listen, I, I'm going to make, I, I don't know how this going to last or how long, I'm going to make sure that I put a, a stamp of my name on here that I know that I am here. So, but I, I greatly appreciate that Sean posting that clip because what it does is show that Wiley is made for TV. Okay? Okay? I'm made for TV. I'm ready for TV. I would love to do uh, the TV. Uh, and stuff like that. And then people say, oh, the makeup. And I'll, hey, things happen. I, I, I'm okay with the makeup. It is it, it, it is what it is. It doesn't bother me. I'm okay with it. It, it didn't bother me at all. It's like, all that. I, it was a good, it was just a good, ex, it was a good experience and I appreciate that. All right. <laughs> it was a great experience. And so I just hope that to the people that left, that trash you like even Jay Wilson trash. I don't know if Jay Wilson trash, but Five A said things like trash that said she was a star. Um, that you did you the star and I'm the, we all stars, okay? And I greatly appreciate it, man. It's I, I would um, and y'all didn't see the best part though. Y'all only saw that, and I forgot. Uh, what I said in the confessionals. I'm like, wow. Wow. I didn't even know I said that. I don't remember saying that. And so now I understand when people on these reality shows, they be like, man, I don't remember I said that. Like, I didn't remember. Like, that stuff, when it was when it was showed to the public, I, I don't remember me saying that. Because I was in the moment. I was in the moment. It wasn't, it wasn't scripted. That was just off the top of my head. I don't remember it. I don't remember me saying that. <laughs> and so if I don't remember that, it's a whole lot of stuff I didn't remember if it ever were to come out. And I was like, woo, I put it on the show. So make sure y'all check out that trailer, blow the numbers up, check it out. And uh, thank y'all so very much. And it's definitely there. And I thank Sean Bradley for posting that to the public and so they can see about that. And I'm like, here you go. This is just, this is just, this is, this is just a, uh, a, uh, a, uh, 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 uh this is a true talent here, uh, underrated ch uh, talent like the Wally Show. I'm underrated, but I am a t I am talented, so I'd rather be underrated with talent than to be overrated with no talent. Um, so I greatly appreciate that. Now, what y'all said in the comments? Did y'all like the video? <laughs> yes, this I'm paying homage to the beef sector. I'm paying homage to the beef sector. 
I pay in homage to the B sector. I remember something in the B sector, and when I was attached to TSCC, y'all remember that? Uh, TSCC was a group that docks, they was ruthless in the B sector. And I met VS. I met her in person. I met VS. She was very, y'all, some of y'all don't know her, but she was just, they was ruthless in these streets, right? And so I, I went to D.C. and I met her. I met V.S. Yes, I did. I met her. Very nice woman, but she don't play. Okay, she have a certain style and she was attractive, uh, beautiful black woman. And the people around her are beautiful as well. And so we, we, went, we went to D.C. And this is when I knew that the power of the media. So I went to D.C. And so V.S., uh, she wanted me to come to D.C. And I knew I was coming because Rico, he was a fan of the show, a, a top fan of the show. He fell in love with Wiley. And so he picked me up from the airport. We took a train. I think we took the bus. We got we got into the Airbnb in the basement. And so we was at the Airbnb. And I asked Rico. I said, Rico, I want to meet up with VS. During that time, he didn't like VS. He was team Sean Bradley. And during that time, Sean Bradley and VS were, they were beefing, right? So he was team Sean Bradley. And so we was in the we was in the Airbnb and I call and, and I call VS and I and I said, you know, Rico, is it okay if I see VS? Because I came with him and I gave him, I said, is it okay? He said, yeah, it's okay. So v, Rico left and went with the Sean to go bake the chicken. He was cooking the food and stuff, okay? So I went with VS and the TSCC members. They pulled up a two Uber Blacks or two SUV trucks and we go to to the casino. I never been to casino in my life. That was the first time ever I was in a casino. So we went to casino and VS was feeding me and then VS and Rico they get into this bad argument. They they was going at it on social media, uh, on YouTube. They was going at it. She was on the YouTube channel. They was dragging each other. And so Rico would say, if I see you, I'm going to do this to you, blah, blah, blah. Deshaun car got towed. So the person that was going to drive Rico to the casino, his car get towed. So they didn't make it to the casino. So we had the casino. And then Rico, he does an interview with Tracy. And it was a YouTuber named Tracy. He was on there talking about Wiley. I did this for Wiley and all of this. Just going then, then Jay Wilson telling Rico to kick me out. Don't let me back in the Airbnb. So I get back to the Airbnb. Rico let me in. Deshaun come over. We drink. We do it. Then I think we went to the club. It was a lot in DC. It was it was literally a lot in DC. OK, it, it was it was it was a lot in D.C. And one mistake that I made, I made a mistake saying I like I, I'm in a relationship. I was never in a relationship with Rico. It was all for clicks and views. During that time, Rico did not know that this is for clicks and views. This is for YouTube. He didn't know that he was an innocent subscriber that I use for clicks and views. And I can say that now. I, I use it for clicks and views. It was for clicks. That's what it's for. It was some clicks and views in DC. So during that time, me and VS, we was pretending like we was gonna make a baby and we was gonna make love. It was all for clicks and views. It was all for clicks. So, but Rico was really falling for me for real in real life, real bad. He was falling for me. And so we go out to the club. Rico left out the club, couldn't get back in. Me and Deshaun, we start connecting, right? He's another YouTuber. We start connecting. And so me and Deshaun, we start kissing, making out. We start doing everything. Rico had his partner. His call, Lukerman, right? He was with Lukerman. He was in the living room getting his box ate by Lukerman. I wasn't attracted to Lukerman. Deshaun wasn't attracted to Lukerman. So me and Deshaun, we go to the other room and we start connecting. Rico busted in the door 
if, if anybody gets a ping, it's going to be me. I pay for this ping. I pay for this uh this uh Airbnb. I did this. And if you don't like it, you can leave. So Deshaun Lee, Lucrative Lev, me and Rico, Rico just going at it. He's in his own rack. And so the next day, Rico still going at it. He said, I know VS and 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 QI. I know they bust a couple of nuts. So I started to laugh because the joke was funny. I was like, <laughs> so the next thing I know, a drink whoosh, of alcohol was thrown in my face. Okay. A drink of alcohol. Whoosh. Rico picked up a cup of alcohol. Okay. And he threw the alcohol in my face. Whoosh. I, I couldn't believe I was, I was I was shocked. I was so shocked because never doing my, I think I was 29 or 30 years old during that time, years of living, that I ever had a drink thrown in my face. Never. So I call the yes. I'm hysterical. I'm over it. I'm ready to go. This is that morning of that uh set the morning of that Sunday night, because uh I'm going. So I'll call VS. I said, VS, come pick me up. She can't pick me up. Rico, he was crying. He didn't want me to leave. Rico uh, was crying. He didn't want me to leave. I had to leave. I had to go back to Texas. I'm not living in D.C. And so I told VS, I said, can you take Rico back home because he have nowhere to go? First, I wanted to call the cops. VS talked me out of it. Listen, VS talked me out of the call. And she said, don't call the cops. So I didn't call the cops. And I, I, he, I said, can you take him home? Because he have nowhere to go. She was like, no, Wiley, I don't trust it. And then, boom. Then she said, okay, I'll take Rico home. So she took Rico home. Rico lived some part during that time in Virginia. We had to drive. It was a little way. We went to McDonald's. And then we drove, and then Rico was just telling the story. And I wanted to laugh during the whole experience because I thought it was just funny. Riley did this. He just blamed all the stuff that I did wrong. And VS just egging it on. Wiley, you actually did that? Oh, that ain't right, Riley. Did you do that? Did you do that? And I'm just, I just want to laugh at it all. And so we finally dropped Rico back at his house. Rico house during that time didn't have no AC. He was living with roommates. They all had their individual room. So it was no AC. Okay? No AC. I'm sweating bullets. We outside hot. He up there making up with VS talking. And then VS was like, go up there and make love with him. So I had to, I was forced to go upstairs to make love to Rico. And I couldn't do it. I wasn't into it. My body was into it. I didn't want to do it. I was pressured. Didn't want to do it. We go in the restroom. I couldn't do it. I I, I could I couldn't erect. I, I just went. I wasn't. I wasn't in the mood. It was extremely hot. I was sweating bullets. I was ready to go get some air, drink some uh some cold water. I wasn't into it. I was done with the Rico. Okay, and so we left Rico, and then I called the shine. I was like, you know, I'm about to link up with VS and them. So me, the shine, QI, VS. We all go to the out out or uh, all you can eat buffet. We eating, and so I'm secretly recording Deshaun because I knew he was gonna come back to YouTube and deny that he was with VS and deny he was with Wiley. So I'm secretly recording all of this. So we I we I recorded all of that. And then once we got access to then I posted it all. And so that was my DC. And then it was a gate. It was DC gate. It was people trash DC gate. They were talking about DC. It literally turned into DC gate. First it was the Vegas gate. And then DC gate was just, wow. It, it was a DC gate. So I made sure when I came to my YouTube into, into like my meet and greet, I did not want it to turn into another gate because I understood that. And so I learned that. So this time I get my own hotel room. 
You know what I'm saying? I'm not staying in nobody Airbnb with nobody. So it won't turn into a gate. So when I, when we had Vegas, I made sure everything was the best of my ability so it won't turn into a gate. So it won't be a controversy because I came from a controversy in D.C. and it was D.C. gate. It was it, 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 and people made video, video after video, after video, after video about that. And so I'm talking about it now is to let y'all know, like for y'all that don't know. And so it definitely was a game. And yeah, man. So that's what that's what that was. And I was uh that was my experience, okay? <laughs> for the people that don't know, if you knew, you don't know. Now. All right, so let's get into Jason Lee and Armand Wiggins, okay? Uh, Armand must have been wa- – hold on. Okay, Armand must have been watching our show because he decided to go and tweet on his Twitter. He decided to go on Twitter, and he tweeted, I know a lot of y'all think I'm thirsty for Hollywood, but to be honest, it's never been that serious. You would never catch me outside looking stupid chasing clout and validation like a lot of these n words <laughs> excuse me a lot of these n words so we all know who he's talking about boom so you see right here uh jason lee right here looked very uncomfortable with will smith and jabari like J- will smith uh uh, J- J- uh jason lee has been everywhere like jason lee has been everywhere and you know, Armand posted that tweet. Then it was a video. I, I wish I could post a video. It was a video that Jason Lee was with Rihanna. And Rihanna, like, pulled away. Like, Jason Lee just, in every picture, like, thirsty in every picture. Like, not in a type of way where he's in it and it's genuine love. Like, he's forcing himself in, in, in the videos. He forced himself in the picture. Like he forced himself to make it seem like this illusion, like he really have these relationships with these celebrities. Yes, he gets the invitation, but he's forced himself. Now, when Armand went and linked up, do I still have that picture? I don't know if I still have that picture. I probably don't. But when Armand met, give me a second. I don't know if I still have that picture. Oh, I got it. When Armand met Kanye West, it was genuine. You're like, it shut down the internet. The media talked about it. It was iconic. It wasn't thirsty. It wasn't like, oh my God, let me take this picture with, let me take this picture with Kanye West. Let, uh, just, it just, just sneaking a bit. Like, like, it was iconic. Like, look at the looks. Like, they got, both of them got on them boots. They got the jacket and the style. Like, this, the, he's on the same level. Like, he's, like, he's on that same level. And so, uh, you know, but with Jason, it seemed to me that he's overdoing it, trying to show that he have these these looks. And don't get me wrong, I'm not, you know, a stand of Ramon Wiggins. I'm a supporter of what he of of Ramon. I, I love the fact that he stood up to Jason Lee. Um, but I feel like Ramon is not thirsty for the attention. I don't see the thirstiness. I feel like Ramon feel like, listen, I'm 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 on your level, right? I don't need you for a look. I am the look. That's our mind, right? I don't need you for a red carpet. I am the red carpet. That's our mind. And Armand Wiggins got something that smells like confidence. A lot of people can't stand Armand Wiggins because of his confidence. That man got confidence in his paws, confidence in the way he walked, confidence in the way he talked. And so a lot of people that don't have that confidence they feel that Armand Wiggins is shady. He is just a confident brother, right? And I feel like that confidence that grew out of his chest is exposing people insecurities. That man is very confident. He have goals, he have aspirations, he have dreams. That he gonna have. He definitely have confidence. And I see that he have always been confident. Uh, he, I'm not gonna say he have always. When the conversation that we had. I remember he did not want to do YouTube. I remember he said, Wally, I don't want to do YouTube. Oh my gosh, I like Facebook. I'm, I'm get-. And he wasn't really getting paid like that for Facebook. And I was like, you really can make a coin on YouTube. And this is before I was popping on YouTube. And I would tell him, get on YouTube, YouTube. And one day it clicked for him. And he got that confidence. Now that brother is making six figures. 
He ain't cut me my check or my cut me my check. That man is making a hundred thousand dollars a month on YouTube. He's making a hundred grand a month. He's making more money than um Storm Monroe. He's making a hundred thousand. Yeah, making a hundred thousand. I don't know if I can say that or mine, but he's making a hundred thousand. Well, Wally, how you know he's making a hundred thousand? Hold on, I'm gonna tell you. Armand, you don't really see him doing a lot of lives because his videos uh, got a lot of views. So he don't have to go live a lot. He make a lot of money. Now he not gonna, he makes six feet. He make a lot of money. He put in his teeth. This man went to uh he went to uh, some part of Mexico. I don't he went to got his teeth done, that's some racks. He wear expensive clothes. He he wears expensive shoes. Look at these boots that he had. Very, very expensive. Where them boots at? Very expensive. Them shoes, it's a nice uh, piece of a uh, penny, them Crocs. Them Balenciaga Crocs. Very expensive. And so a lot of people was like, they're saying about, where's your receipts? Where's your receipts? You guys, he's making sick. Do you see them views? Okay. He's living in a high-rise apartment. He's making good money on YouTube. And so he don't have to go live every day because that, that live that he did, give me a second. Hold on. I know I'm telling his business, and if I'm lying, I'm flying, but I'm not lying. He did a video about Arkbar, got 110,000 views. He did that eight days ago, okay? That's his quota, Okay. He did that Jason Lee video, 248,000. That's a nice quota. He did the 94,000 uh, views. That's a quota. That's good money maker on them videos. He's making a cute corn off them three videos alone. Then he got another video of 57,000, another video of 87,000, another video of 89,000, another video of 104,000. Like his check that's going to come for next month, good money. He made good money on his quota. So he don't have to go live like every day like the Wally show is because he's making a lot of money off them views that he's getting. He don't have to do that. And I, I'm not doing it to downstorm Monroe. I'm just only talking. Okay. Don't get mad at Wally because I'm a commentator. So don't get mad. Okay. He don't have to do what Storm does. Storm chops it up because Storm doesn't get them same type of views as Amar Wiggins. I'm only saying this because I'm, I'm just saying this because I'm, I'm a commentator. This is what I do. So he don't have to chop it up like Storm. Like Storm got to chop it up because he got to do everything possible. You do this for a time just to break even, right? Because he's not making the money that he used to make on YouTube. Or mine just so happened making good money without interviews, right? And that's very iconic for a mind that he's getting the viewership without an interview. Mm, okay, without an interview, mind you, he never had a Jaguar right interview, but the viewership is on his side alone. So just imagine if he were to get a Nikki or a Cardi or DJ Academics or a Joe Button, it would take him even further. But right now he's doing a damn good job independently by himself. And many people will say, Wiley, you've been bought and you've been paid for by Armand. I haven't got a check from Armand. I'm just giving you facts. His viewership is eating almost close, sometimes beating Tasha K viewership. And he doesn't even have a million subscribers. Okay. He's getting the type of views that Lovely T are getting, and he's not even at 900 and some thousand. And so I can say this. He can't say it, but I can say it. I don't have, I have colleagues in this business, right? And I'm going to be able to talk about my colleagues. And the reason why I'm bringing Storm up, because I can. What, what's, what's the problem with you, Tiffany? Are, I can't bring Storm Monroe up here. I, I'm a commentator. I'm bringing him up. Okay. All right, it's it's a hot topic. What the what's the problem, Tiffany? Tiffany, hold on, let me drop you a link, Tiffany, because I think I think I think you want to talk to me on online. Hold on, Tiffany, give me a second. 
Tiffany, Tiffany, hit the link. Hit the link. You got something to say? Hit the link. Hit the link. Where you at, Tiffany? Hit the link. Hit the link, Tiffany. I'm waiting on you. Put on your good wig. You don't even got to put on your good wig. Hit the link. Because you got a whole lot of stuff to say. All right. So that's what I'm saying. He's getting a lot of viewership. And I'm not saying that he's he's making six figures, not six figures off a video. I'm talking about his YouTube check. Probably his YouTube check is eighty to $90,000. He's probably going to get a, a YouTube check about eighty to $90,000. I believe so. Absolutely. 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 Let me go to Social Blend. Do they still have Social Blend? Thank you. Somebody uh, sent me a cash app. Thank you, because we're trying to do YouTube full time. Thank you for sending a cash app. Um, let me send you your heart. Somebody else sent me another cash app. Thank you. Let me send you your heart so you'll know I got it. Let me see if I can go to Social Blend. And Social Blend is really not the accurate. Thank you. I think two people sent me a, ca a cash app. And this other lady, she just be sending me a cash up. I, I'm happy, no matter how big or small. I'm happy. Is it social blend? Is this do, do that still exist? I don't know if that still exists, but y'all let me. Okay, I'm gonna go to socialblend.com, and I'm gonna type in Armand Wiggins. Oh, hold on. Let me do it. Okay. Armand Wiggins show. Okay. He got a B. And right then and there, this is not accurate. See, social blend is not accurate with the income because they got right here estimated monthly in earnings 3.3 thousand. That's not accurate. Um, yearly 2.4K, the lowest, the max 39.6. That's not accurate with the income. Let me type in mine. So let me see if they're accurate because that's that's way up. They're not accurate with the income. Social blend is not really that reliable because it's not accurate. Only thing I like to look at about social blend, they're saying he got a B on on there in the in the rankings that they have on there. Okay. Yeah, that's not accurate. Cause they say I got a B minus. They said sixty six dollars and one point one K. A month earnings not accurate. Uh, they say for the yearly seven hundred and ninety to twelve point six k. That's not accurate. That's not accurate at all. That's not accurate at all. Okay, who's backstage? Okay, that's that's not accurate at all. Okay, that's that's not accurate. If it, it, it if it's sixty six dollars, like child, I would not be doing this for sixty six dollars. Child, they tried it on social blend. They tried me. They said Wally only made sixty six dollars. Oh, is this is this uh is this Tiffany? You big ass Tiffany. Uh uh. See, I thought you were Tiffany. See, 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 Tiffany, Tiffany. See, you see that? You you see that? You see, <laughs> you see, you see that they bad, they bad, but it's the truth. I don't know why, why, why they mad. Hold on, Tiff, come on camera, come on camera, Tiffany, come on camera. They can't hear you, Tiffany. Come on, they can't hear you. Come on camera. <laughs> I don't understand why they trigger. I'm just sitting down just giving my opinion about it all. I don't know why they mad at Wiley. They mad because I'm triggering the truth. They are, exp I'm exposing their insecurities because this person is not insecure. Number one, they don't have their picture. Number two, we can't see how they look. Number three, they're they they showing the insecurities because I'm talking about somebody that is confident. I'm very confident, and so I'm talking about somebody with some confidence, and they can't stand it. They can't. They get mad when I compare other YouTubers, but these are facts. Show your face, Tiffany. No, uh, uh, that's that's your ceiling. Hold on, 
Show your face, Tiffany. Show your face. That's your ceiling. We backstage. Show your face. Let me see your face. Put the camera on your face. That's your ceiling. Is you in a school? Where you at? You at work? Come on, y'all. Come on, Tiffany. We probably gonna do an after show with Tiffany. <laughs> Why are you sure your ceiling? If you got so much message, let's see your face. Show your face. They can't hear you. <laughs> so back to our mind, he's doing an incredibly well, right? Storm, and see, this is the thing. Storm shouldn't be mad at me a while he's talking because I only got 28,000 subscribers. I'm only giving my opinion. Storm, unfortunately, he peaked so high. Storm had a, a drop, okay? He dropped. The views dropped. He peaked really high with Jaguar, right? And then he just he had a, he had a drop. He he got in a beef with Tasha K, and the viewers left him. They started to gradually leave him. They started to left. They they left him, and that that Tasha K Tasha K the name it kind of tarnished the Storm Aro brand. Storm needs another interview to give him clout. He needs that. It did not happen with the the, 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 the heavy set guy, the bodyguard. It did not happen to him. He's trying to recapitalize that Jaguar right moment. Tasha K used her muscle and she discouraged people from following Storm Monroe. Yes, she 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 discouraged that and they started to leave Storm. Right? Because the genie interview didn't go viral. See Storm, I think he's trying to play it safe. You know, he got he got to have a little bit of some controversy. So the thing about Armand, you can say whatever. That man got he's a he's a he, he got a sniff of controversy. See Storm want to play it safe. Storm he he want to he want to he want to play it. He playing it too safe. He need to have a little bit of controversy. See Armand have controversy. He took and Storm, he's trying to play it safe. So we're gonna see what Storm gonna go in his next role. But he had that, he had that high, and then he just went down. Okay, and it went down. And then and then and then Storm, that personality, he gotta work on that. And so the people they 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 didn't they, they didn't go back and watch him. They didn't, and so he he had to find that to build that that base up. You know what I'm saying? And maybe he need to get a co-host. Maybe he need to work with other people. I think that podcast with Von Ray that was something different. That was something fresh for his channel, and he should have kept that. But storm stuff that he started he left away from that. So he started to do that, and that's just very unfortunate. And so. uh Many people will talk about Storm and all of this, but they're not watching them like they used to. And these are facts. I'm not lying. I'm not making this stuff up. And most of y'all that's over here and uh, I'm talking, y'all don't even know. Okay? Are y'all sending me Storm my real numbers? Okay. So they eighty four thousand for Armand Wiggins. This on Playboy and and Storm and Roll about thirty thousand. Okay, so people are definitely having their thoughts, and people don't want to be honest. I I think Storm. If I was Storm, I would surround myself with gay men. Because that's the elephant in the room. I will surround myself with gay men. I would. I, I would get a panel of gay men and have open discussion. I think 
he need to play around with that. I would, I would fool the audience and play around with it. Hell, I would kiss a man on camera just to get some clicks and views to go viral. I would do it. If I was Storm, kiss a man, get you the most flamboyant, and kiss him on the air and watch that shit, boosh, go viral. I would come out and say, let me come out of the closet. If I just be gay for Pat. That would make it, that would be some controversy. Okay. And see, that will drive people to watch. And they would just, oh my gosh, whoosh, they would they watch. He may like it. He may like the kids. He may like it. And because, you know, Dr. Larry Reed said he got his ping ping licked and it, it felt good. He might like the kids. He might like it. I would just do it just to get the most attractive guy good for camera and just kiss him on the air. I would do that. That's one of my, and, 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 and let them drag you. Cause like Armand took risks. He gets dragged a lot for his opinion. I think I disagree with you, T-Time. Uh, you say Storm is living his best life and minding his business. He's not obsessed with going viral. That's not true. I, 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 I respectfully disagree because he said he's trying to capitalize that Jack Alright interview. I think he should have released and see, that was just a show Storm when he didn't release that Corey Hardwick video. That shows Storm he's not ready to create uh, to do risk. He wanted to just continue to play it safe. And he's at a point with his subscriber base, you can't play it safe. If you want that viral moment, you got to go for it. And I think he played he played it real. And then he had the Corey Hardwick. Then he bring up the bad boy guy. He ain't got no controversy. I can understand if the man slept with Diddy. See, the interview didn't go viral because it wasn't no T. It wasn't nothing juicy. I could see if, if the bodyguard said he slept with Diddy or seen Diddy having sex party with men, that interview would have had more buzz. The reason why the Jack Wall Wright interview went viral is because she was saying the most Atlantis stuff, very elegant, very uh, she's very, 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 very intelligent. And she was just dragging these celebrities, and it was very entertaining. That bodyguard wasn't really giving no tea. So you might as well put out uh, the interview. And if it is T, he didn't. Let me say this, because many people say it was T. I give you that. But the guy didn't deliver the T right. He delivered it like he was delivering spoiled milk. He wasn't delivered. The presentation wasn't right. Because if it was some T, the guy that was delivering the T wasn't delivered right. If Jaguar Wright would have had that, that T, it would have went more viral because she is more, more articulate in, in her T delivery. But the guy, unfortunately, it was spoiled milk, unfortunately. Okay? Unfortunately, like, it was lukewarm ice water. Run apples. So, you know, when he didn't put out that Corey Hardrick video, I said, put it out. He said a president that he was scared. Oh, wow, 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 wow. And then the guy, he not smart. He kept saying, buy my book. Bruh, we don't know you to buy your book. Give us some tea. Deliver the tea right with a couple of little sprinkles, some lies, and then we'll rush to buy your book. You didn't give us nothing to rush to buy that book. You deliver it in the every third sentence. Buy my book. It's in my book. You just, his delivery wasn't, his tone and delivery wasn't right. It wasn't. 
It wasn't right. We don't know him. Y'all didn't even rush to buy the man book. And then the man book is too expensive. I think he's selling the book for $30. Man, stories. they going to really buy my book. Bruh, give us the tea, sprinkle it with some lies, and we will rush to buy your book. Okay? And he don't even have an Audible book. I, I want to listen to an Audible so I can listen to it on the plane. He even got it on Audible. And then the connection. Let me break this down because y'all don't want to hear me. Some of y'all are Storm on Roll fans, but y'all don't want to tell the truth. And most of y'all are fans. Y'all know I'm telling the truth, but you got to save face by criticizing Wally. When he released the video, they was having connection problems. It was the echo sound. Storm Monroe been in this business too long enough with Tasha K to have uh, uh, internet, and not internet problems, but connections and the quality, the sound wasn't good enough. That sound got to be right. You brought him to your house, but that sound wasn't right. You pose a pre, you pose a test it out before you do deliver the interviews. I'm just saying, you make it too much money for that type of mistake. And this is just me giving facts. Okay. Most of y'all know I'm telling the truth. And see, this is going to help Storm. I'm not going to tell you the questions that I would ask him because I'm going to keep it to myself. But I would have got him to come on. First of all, we, 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 it, it, it would have been some, some entertain. We, we would have, <laughs> I'm going to say that, but I'm not going to tell my questions. No. And then the seating wasn't right. Storm was in the Tasha K Academy. He was in the Tasha K Academy. One thing about Tasha, her quality in the setup is good. And Storm need to take a page out of Tasha K Academy. You need to put more money into your platform. You're making too much money on YouTube. That's one thing about our mind. His quality is there. When he had interviewed this artist, can't think of the artist's name, he had the mics, the sound was good, he was real good. And he did not take our uh, uh, the uh, Tasha K course. He just learned just by observing the course. You know what I'm saying? Just like when I interviewed the neighbor, I said, never again, I'm going to make sure my hair is cut. So I learned. So now I just go to my barber. I went to my barber again today. And I said, I need another haircut. Then I'm going to the dentist. I said, I'm going to get another haircut. He said, man, you always come in. I said, I want to be fresh. Because when I did the interview, I looked at a hot mess. <laughs> I looked like a homeless person. And then I did not like the quality, even though she didn't show her face. I didn't like the quality. I said, let me please find a mic, uh, a camera. So y'all told me where to get the camera. And so... I went to Best Buy and I got the camera, okay? And I made sure my hair, and that's, okay, we're going to get these teeth together, okay? So every little money, we put it, and then I said, let me buy some shirts to change up my outfit and buy some shirts. So we put money in there, okay? Yeah, then I went to buy a computer for $1,000, then we bought this mic, it was about three dollars $400, and then we got some more lights. So I had to learn, I had to put, the little money that was coming through the platform, I put it back into the platform because you have to. And that's what I did. So I'm not telling Storm to do something that I'm not doing. Okay? That's how it works. And so I'm just giving my opinion. And if you don't like my opinion, 
We always drop the link and you can call in. If you know better, then why don't you interview him? I don't know him. Okay? Now, I'm going to get, in these predictions, it's going to get a lot of people upset with me. Okay, let's get to the midterm predictions really quickly. I don't think Stacey Abrams is going to win. Number one, she's overweight. Okay? She's a little masculine, overweight. And I don't think black men are going to vote for her, unfortunately. She don't give me that, what are you going to do for black men? Okay? Maybe if she was a, uh, attractive and and with a body look attractive like young Miami, just attractive. BBL, maybe black men would be attractive. They don't want they don't want her in, 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 in the, the government. She won't win. She's gonna lose. And Governor Kemp is definitely gonna win. That's my predictions on that. I do believe Herschel Walker is going to win because I don't think the Democrats are that energized. I believe Herschel Walker is gonna win. Because the, the Republicans are energized. And so I don't believe that Reverend Warnock is going to win. That's my first opinion. And I'm just giving my thoughts. Okay? No. See, again, I knew somebody was going to say this. Why did you take your meds? You're tripping. I'm giving my thoughts. Are you Are you going to vote for her? I don't think. That's why she's losing in the polls. That's my prediction. I do believe that she's going to lose. Okay? And people say, respect her. She's the queen. I'm just giving you facts. Most brothers that I talked to, they said she overweight. She hit the gym. And I think if she was, the, if she would have did a weight loss challenge and hit the gym and get her body down, come and looking gorgeous, stuff like that, then maybe it was like, oh, this is an inspiration. Like, I'm going to work with you all like I'm working to get these pounds down. She didn't really focus on that. And I'm not trying to diss her. I'm just giving my thoughts and giving my predictions. Like, anybody else can give their predictions. She should have hit the gym. This is what she should have did. This is why I should have worked with her campaign. She should have hit the gym and said, you know what, Georgia? I'm going to push this plate back. I'm going to work hard. I'm at the gym. I'm walking. I'm jogging. I'm going to be helping Georgians help being healthy. I want to push back this plate. I'm going to get on this trail mill and burn these, and burn these pounds down. Give me an attractive trainer we do conversation we talk about politics and do a whole tour in the gym working hard sweating down them pounds that's what i think she should have done she would have got more media attention more inspiration she should have been hitting the trail mill okay and and she should have did a whole tour in the gym That's what I believe that she should have did. They didn't want to listen to me. I think one person hung up the phone. I said, she needs to do a, 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 a tour in the gym. Uh-uh. For the people that, the trolls that's coming back here, I'm not letting y'all on. Sorry. Y'all got to call in. Uh, I'm going to call in. Nope. All the trolls. You, you ain't going to be able to troll on here. Okay? No, I, I, it would, it would have been, it would have been better if, if she would have done that. She should have done that, but no, people just give her cheeseburgers, steaks, fried chicken. That ain't healthy. It ain't healthy when I gain weight. You know, if you're trying to get to the the, the governor's the governor's mansion, first hit the gym. That would inspire black men. Who's in the gym? Black men. You could have been talking to black men in the gym, building that coalition. But you can't be in the fools, the food line, Popeyes, ordering a cheeseburger and, and a chicken sandwich. She could have been in the gym working with the black men, working out with them. All right. That's just my humble opinion. She's going to lose. 
She could have went door to door, but y'all going door to door. I'm just saying. All right, that's just my opinion. Uh, we're gonna drop the link. If anybody wanna, we're gonna open up the phone lines and we're gonna allow you all to come in. That, that is my opinion. I do believe Dr. Oz is gonna win because the other guy, he can't even hardly talk. He had a stroll. He's slowing over. He's slowing over his words. They should. He should have dropped out of the race. You can't hardly talk. Get somebody that can speak articulate and drop out of the race. But that 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 guy that had the stroke, he gonna lose, and Dr. Oz gonna win. He should have just dropped out of the race. Race that debate was embarrassing. It was it was trash. It was embarrassing, and uh, he should have just dropped out of the race. I don't I don't even know who told that man to stay in the race after he had a stroke. Couldn't even hardly talk. What 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 you say? Just repeat. I said, get this man off the stage. All right. Um, and that's my predictions, man. That's what I have. Okay. Many people said that you, I got enough rest today. I'm just giving my opinion. Only people that's mad at me. <laughs> at my, how you mad at me? At my, we gonna open up the phone lines and I'm gonna hear y'all thoughts. Okay. People get mad at me. Wiley, that was rough. I'm getting emails from people from Georgia. Oh, that was rough. But that's my opinion. But I guarantee if she would have done my idea, it would have went viral. Give me a second. I'm going to open the phone line because y'all not dropping the link, so I'm opening up the phone lines. Okay? All right. Give me a second here. Moderators, if you can post the 646 number, we're opening the phone lines. I'm getting emails right now saying that I should come to Georgia to help Stacey Abrams, but it's too late. She didn't hire me. I charge about three thousand dollars an hour. Should have hired me. I would have been. I would have been a good uh, person to work for a campaign. I charge about three thousand. Three thousand dollars an hour. Give me a second. At your show now, press one. Your show is scheduled to start in 35 seconds. <clears throat> 35 seconds. All right. I saw $3,000 an hour. I, if I lose the potential sponsors, I lose the potential sponsors. <laughs> I'm serious. It's my opinion. Y'all is getting mad at me. Because I said she... Your show will go live in five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Blog Talk Radio. All right, the number is on the screen. Did y'all hear that? Let me know if y'all heard it. I'm a definitely... I, I should have left her voicemail, but it's too late. She, she didn't want to listen to me. Okay. All right. So we got the phone lines open up. Anybody want to call in? This is the time. If y'all want the show to continue, this is the time right now. I got the, uh, we've been on here for an hour. Somebody said, I think your suggestion for her is great ideas. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you. So we got the phone lines open up. So if anybody want to call in, give their thoughts. Um, they said, what about Gov Governor Abbott is different because he talks about his, his disability. He did. He talked about it. And that's a good success story. And the thing that messed up, the thing that re the reason why Governor Abbott is going to win is because what messed up with with the, uh, Beto is Beto start talking about taking people guns away. That's a bad, bad thing to say in Texas. Texas, one thing Texas love is they guns, guns, guns. So he was he went too hard on that. What Beto should have said, we're going to increase school security. We're going to increase having police and metal detectors in these schools to protect our students. What Beto started to do, he started take away the guns. That that message is a turnoff for people in Texas. I talked to him. And so when he started saying that, I said, he's not going to win. He's just out of touch with, with Texas on that, even though 
he talks really, really good about marijuana, but you lose a lot of people when you're talking about taking people guns. And I think that he should have, he should have, he should have really, really, he should have did a campaign speech saying, listen, the same way we have to go to the TSA and airport, that's the same way we need to do in these schools, have that type of protection. He should have did, he should have ran campaigns about stuff like that. And he should have, he should have done it. He didn't do that. And so what he did was he just played on the whole thing that happened in Avaldi, which we're very sad about Avaldi. But he said, what could avoid all of this if they had metal detectors and armed security guards like they got in these urban high schools, like in most of these urban high schools, they got metal detectors. And most of the schools in the hood, you got metal detectors, you got police officers all at the schools. They used to do that in all the rest of the schools. So I think that he should have done that. Uh, he should he should have ran campaign videos and he didn't do that. I didn't see that one campaign video like that. And he would have won, but he didn't do it. So he lost. All right. Thank y'all so very much for tuning in. I guess we didn't get any phone calls today. Um, thank you all so very much. And I think that he should have ran those campaign videos. Like beep, beep. We're gonna now increase the school security and all to protect our students. All right. Um Give me a second. I don't know if the I don't even know if the phone lines is working. So y'all bear with me, okay? And, and that's why I believe he's gonna lose. I, that's my. These are just my predictions. I believe that Governor Abbott is gonna be our governor in uh, on November eighth, and I believe that um, Herschel Walker is gonna win. I believe that um, Governor Abbott is gonna win. I mean, Governor Abbott is gonna win, and uh, Kemp, Governor Kemp is gonna win. Those are my predictions. If you disagree with my predictions, you can call in. You can give your predictions or who you think going to win or lose. Okay. If you, well, again, the message uh, for it. Oh, we got a phone call. Okay. 7136, call you live on the air. Hi, Wally. How you doing? Wonderful. How you doing? Is this Stacey Abrams? I'm doing fine. No, <laughs> but I think that was a wonderful idea that you said. Yes. Tell us why it you think it made a lot of sense. Okay. It, it did. It made a lot of sense to be in the gym exercising. And um, she would have been able to talk to both sex, men and women. Absolutely. And I think that with people, it's all about the optics. That would have that would have shown great optics for her campaign. And she didn't do it. And because she was having a problem reaching black men, she was having a problem reaching that demographic. And a lot of black men, hell, a lot of men are in the gym. So that would have inspired a lot of men to be like, oh, let me give her a chance. Was she out here working out, burning off them pounds? Right. And then too. They always judge the women in the workplace. It's the um, the look. So they they look for a certain look. So I get exactly what you're saying. They want somebody a little bit more attractive, slimmer, younger. I, I get all of that. Absolutely, and that's what I believe. And uh, many people were upset. About my opinion, if they're saying, oh, sure, no, I'm just giving my thoughts. And then that's why we open up the phone lines to allow people to give their thoughts, to give their opinion, and to give what they think about this, their predictions. Uh, did you, are you going to vote? Are you going to vote? Or are you not going to vote? Where you, where you stand right there? Well, no, I stay in California, but I, I do agree with you okay. 100%. Absolutely. Absolutely. I know California definitely have it rough with the, with the Speaker of the House. Husband was attacked. But again, I'm not shocked about what's going on. This is why people should go and get Roland Martin book, White Fear, how the brown of America is making white folks lose their mind. People are, and it's, it's going to be more attacks, unfortunately, in this country. So I think I'm not, I'm not shocked at it all. And I'm surprised speaking about the Speaker of the House uh, Nancy Pelosi, that they don't have security. I, I thought that the Speaker of the House and her family have security. So I was shocked that it was no, that they didn't have any security. That guy was able to break into the house and her husband had to call the cops. I was shocked. And I believe that Congress needs to pass a law that all Congress people, whether you are sitting in the Congress, should have security and to protect their families. I, I thought they had that. I was surprised that they didn't have it. 
because I think sometimes people think their color will save them and where they live will save them. Uh, we are living in a time that um, they are going in the rich neighborhoods now where they didn't used to have to have bars, security, alarm. They need that now. Absolutely. Most definitely you need that now, especially in this Ever since, ever since what happened in January 6th, Congress should have passed the law and say, hey, we're going to have protect our state of representatives and their families. Uh, because people forget when o President Obama was a junior senator from Illinois, he had to get Secret Service uh, protection while he was campaigning. That never happened before he, because of the, the threats that he was receiving being the first African-American to be serious of winning uh, the presidency. And so I, I, I believe that Congress should pass a law that ha they should have security to protect them and their family. Even though I know that's going to cost the taxpayers money, but I'd rather it cost us money than to see something happen. Just like her husband had to get surgery because his skull was like cracked. Like, that's crazy. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. But thank you so very much for calling in. Thank you, Wally. Thank you. Okay, uh, 4893, Carly, you're live on air. Hi, handsome. How are you doing, Wiley? I'm doing wonderful. Okay. Now, I have several things. I want, this is Judy Coles calling again. Okay. Um, I wanted to discuss several different things. Uh, first topic is, um, as far as Nancy Pelosi's husband is concerned, um, I really don't have a lot of sympathy or pity because, first of all, they're mil millionaires several times over, and they are of a privileged class. And even though she is supposed to be representing a majority Black constituency, uh, that's not where her allegiance lies. Her allegiance lies with people of power and money. So that's the problem I have. Well, I, I, even with, even with that, I believe. So you don't believe that Congress should be protected, that their family should be protected, because you have a problem with his, with 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 his wife. He's not a politician. He's innocent. He's not a politician. His wife is the politician. No, no, he's not a po he's not a politician. I agree, but as far as uh, well, he has his his own other issues. But I guess my my uh, problem with them lies more with her than with him. Okay, so let's put it like that. This in the out in that discussion as far as that is concerned right there. Um, secondly, um, I, I believe that Armand deserves all of the credit that he is getting right now. And I hope to see him continue to grow just, just as I hope to see you continue to grow. Absolutely. Just as I hope to see a lot of the young black YouTubers continue to grow. Um, there are a lot, there's room at the table for all of you to make a lot of bread. And, you know, I, I have learned so much from professional YouTubers and I love just all of the various topics and discussion. And even though it keeps me up late at night as I'm retired, so it doesn't bother me, you know, but I just love the amount of knowledge that's out there that even I, as a 61 year old retired English teacher, I am so privy to all of this knowledge that I'm gaining from you young people. And and it's and I just feel like it's so it's so great. And I'm glad that you're making a lot of money. And I hope that you make a whole lot more. 
And so I, I want to say I this. Don't have a I, I hear that part, and I just disagree because I don't think that if you're a millionaire, you deserve to be beaten. I personally believe that our tax dollars should go to protect the politicians and their families because I I wouldn't want nobody to go inside President Obama's house to attack his family. I don't want that. I think that protection should lie with the politician. Um, I believe the protection should lie with politicians and their families, and I believe the taxpayers should also pay for it because this is sad. I, I cried. I teared up um, hearing that her husband had to get surgery, and he's in his 80s. That's that he's a senior citizen. Oh, I didn't hear. And the guy, oh, I didn't, oh wow. And 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 the guy said, I'm looking for Nancy. That's very that's heartbreaking. And so I definitely I, I know I was on the phone today when my senator uh with Senator Ted Cruz uh, office. I said, you need to propose a bill that that you know that y'all have protection, that you have police protection or protection from the Secret Service or protection for the Congress and their family. So I definitely was on the phone today, and I definitely believe that they need to have that. I definitely believe that the taxpayers should pay for it. Okay, okay. Um, I didn't, re I didn't understand that he had to have surgery. Absolutely, he did. I did know, I did know that he was a senior citizen. Um, but I thought that they lived in a gated community. I don't know if they live in a gated yep. community because I know when I saw it in the news, I didn't see a gated community, and I didn't, I didn't see it at all. But even even then, you still sh they should have security, and hopefully, I know after this, and, they should. In my and you opinion. think that the tax you think that taxpayers should pay for a while? I, I think that the tax, and this is what I'm saying. I think that the taxes from legalizing marijuana in all states, that should go to help pay for the security of the politicians and their families. I believe they should legalize marijuana on a national level. And with those revenues from those tax dollars, I do believe that should go to partially that, that those funds should go towards to protecting the politicians and their wives and their families. I, I oh. do believe that. Uh, just like the president, uh, they have protection, uh, I believe, for life. And I believe that same standard should be for active, you know, congressperson, active senators. And I believe that you should lose it once you lose the once you're no longer a senator or a congressperson, unless you have threats and then the the, the security should be implemented. Those are just my opinion. And that's why I was on the phone today with my senator, Senator Ted Cruz, and said, Hey, you need to propose this bill. I love, I love him. Yeah. You, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm definitely doing that. But thank you so very much for calling in a retired English teacher. Oh, yeah. Yes. And um and and Wally, God bless you. Thank you. Continued continued good luck to you, sir. Thank you. And I'm gonna watch I'm gonna watch the clip as soon as I hang up the phone. Okay. Thank you so very much. All right. Okay. And I'll and I'll let you know. I'll give you my feedback later okay. in the week. All right. Thank you so very okay. much. All right. Thank you. Uh, yes. Sir. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right. Uh, five five nine eight. Caller, you're live on the air. Wiley. Hi. Welcome. Hey, Wiley. How you doing? Doing wonderful. Oh, don't get, don't, don't, don't do that. But anyway, listen, honey, let me just say this. Uh, 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 Pelosi, she knew what she was doing, okay? She knew what she was doing. Wiley, they are rich as cream, honey. She knew exactly what she was doing. Let me tell you what she did. That helper got up in the morning and said, I'm taking all the security to Washington with me, honey. And she let that man get bopped on his head. And 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 she she <laughs> she's confused. Well, you didn't leave them with no security. Of course they get security. She's like one of the top politicians in Washington. Cause I believe she's third in line, and I think third or fourth in line. I believe she's third in line to become president if in a succession. I believe she's third in line, if I'm not mistaken. Third, I believe so. She's the speaker of the house. Yeah, she let that man, she let her husband get bopped on his head. And she, you know, she's trying to play the old card like she didn't know. 
girl. <laughs> you you knew what the you knew what time it was. You should have left at least one. She didn't leave him not near security for him at home. But I I, pers- I personally believe that it should be an investigation, and I do believe that family should be protected. And it's very very heartbreaking. I did cry earlier today when I got the news about her husband because it's hurtful. I don't want to see, you know, nobody go and get attacked, you know, nobody. And I also was looking at the news that a lot of the carjacking is happening in this country. And I'm like, the crime is just really, really high in a lot of these cities. And I'm like, hopefully that our, you know, these politicians do right with the crime. If they don't need to get other politicians in there, but I'm definitely hoping that Congress pass a bill to protect these politicians and their families, because this is not the the first. This this won't be the first. This won't be the last. Because we are now in this spirit that people are now attacking politicians, and it's not right, in my humble opinion. And their family's not right because her husband is not a politician. Her husband is a sit a private citizen. Whether he's a millionaire or not, you don't deserve to be attacked. Just like if you're poor on welfare, Pookie Nim and Ray Ray. And them uh, mm-hmm. don't deserve to be attacked uh, in this country. So I, I believe they they should have protection and safety uh, in these neighborhoods. I, I believe that. I don't care if you got two dollars in your pocket. Pookie they don't deserve, Ray. you know, Pookie and Ray Ray and Shaquita and them don't deserve to be attacked. Just mm-hmm. like the millionaires and the billionaires don't deserve to be attacked. And so I do believe that the taxpayers, um, due to the legalization of marijuana and all of that, some of that tax money should go towards the protecting our politicians. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But my thing is, is that if you realize this is what you're saying, you're saying that, you know, the husband should have been secure. But don't you think she should have been saying that? She She should have. Right out of that house. She should have. And I don't know what really happened. I I really can't. And I'm definitely going to hopefully that they do an investigation. I know they're investigating this and hopefully they do an internal investigation of her security protocols. And maybe they need to change some things. They need to investigate her. Yeah, and maybe her security details because why was it no security? Is it, I don't know, because I heard people saying the security just followed the speaker and not her family. So I don't know those details. And I'm definitely going to ask, get some questions answered and call. I'm definitely going to be making some phone calls on Monday to see about her protocols. Like, do the security just follow the speaker or is they obligated to follow the husband as well? So I don't know. I, I just. Well, somebody in the comments said, that the, the, the man the man the man was recently locked up for DUI. Now I don't know what's going on here, Wiley, but it's it's not it's, it's looking like we need to investigate. Yeah, and like def- really def- they definitely need, need they definitely they, driving drunk. They definitely mm-hmm. need they definitely need an uh an investigation. I and I say that uh, because they definitely need it. And we definitely will be doing that um you know calling and making sure that we call and something and we definitely going to do that and we definitely going to be calling the speaker of the house and we definitely going to be calling the congressional uh the black uh congressional caucus and to see the black congressional caucus and, and, and see about that okay i don't know I, I don't know if they're not going to do anything but i'm definitely going to be making that phone call monday it, that was it ma'am <laughs> what now Thank you. Okay, somebody said in the chat, security stay with the politician is based on if there is a viable threat, they increase temporarily. It is done by the, uh, the Secret Service. Okay, thank you. So we we got an idea, and that's thinking of what's going on. But thank you so very much for... Uh, uh, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, 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 go ahead. Don't go over your plan. As reckless as Pelosi's mouth is, she knows she needs security 24 <laughs> hours a day. But that don't mean she don't need <laughs> But that don't mean she leave her husband. He, you know, he didn't got DUIs. He, you know, he's walking out just driving. He don't care. He's 82. He didn't got bots on his head. I don't know if he's gonna recover. I mean, it's a lot of things going on. Yeah, that's sure. Uh and, and it's just looking suspect to me. But you know, we're gonna keep um uh, uh, we're gonna keep them in our prayers, especially the husband, you know, because it seemed like she really didn't care. Okay, we, she 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 didn't leave him with a dog. Why? She did not leave him with a dog to protect him. Wow, it's really there really no it's really 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 sad, you know, that that situation happened. I'm definitely 
my prayers are with it. And so we definitely are are praying for the Pelosi family. Um, and we definitely mm -hmm. asking for that. So thank you, sis, for calling and giving your perspective. Not thank even you. a life alert. Why? <laughs> he couldn't a life alert. Definitely need that. <laughs> I'm gone. Okay, Wiley. Thank you so very much for that. And I know a lot of people would say, Wiley, she will lift a figure for me. Listen, I'm just giving my thoughts. And I say you all can just call in and give your thoughts uh, about it. But I'm definitely praying. Definitely, I don't, um, I don't want to tear up in this video. But definitely praying for Mr. Pelosi um, and Nancy Pelosi. I'm a huge fan of Nancy Pelosi's life. Huge, huge fan uh, for her for her life and what she has been doing for uh, Black America. Um, very, very, very good woman. Uh, very nice. Um, her husband is, um, uh, I don't know too much about her husband, but I did a lot of research on Nancy Pelosi and, her, and, and they passed a lot of bills. Whew, I don't want to tear up. I just don't want to. I don't want to tear up. But they passed a lot of bills to help Black America. And yeah, I, I don't want to. I don't want to tear up, but uh, it just, you know, I just don't want to tear up. Thank you. Okay, she have done, definitely done a lot, man. We thank you so very much. Um, many people is upset that I'm is, uh, talking about this, but I'm definitely talking about it. So we definitely, uh, I'm definitely going to go and check on may take a flight going um, to be with the family i don't know if they're going to welcome me or not um definitely be there and um but jack but we greatly um they're definitely in my prayers and um but you all should be praying as well um thank you but she um uh, passed a lot of bills uh for um black america uh for america people people period she have done so much to uh to help us and um, a great ally for the black community. And um, it's a lot that I can say and um, I love her and support her. She's a good woman and I don't believe nobody should be attacked. And most people in here um, is upset, you know, Pookie and Ray Ray and them and they upset about it because of um, the crime that goes on in their neighborhoods. And I want the Pookie and Ray Ray and them to rally behind and get politicians that's going to fight crime. And this is why I'm thinking about running for mayor or governor of Chicago, uh, because I will be tough on crime. If you if you steal a sneaker bar, you get 60 years in prison. Uh, if you carjack, you get 100 years in prison. Uh, if you rob, you get 300 years in prison. Um, it would be really, really tough uh, on on crime. Um, National Guard would be present. Um, and I would be really, really tough on, 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 on crime. If you miss child support, 65 years in prison. And so um, be really, really tough uh, for, for crime and clearing up the streets. Um, if you if you rock a gang sign, get caught with gang um, signs, you would be in jail for about five hundred years. So, I would definitely um, be in a really really tough on crime, and so um, that's what I would do if I were running. But of course, I'm not running for DA or you know or or Congress or Senate or anything, but. I would love to run for governor of Illinois and, um, you know, be real tough. Uh, 1867, Carla, you're live on air. Hey, Wiley, can you hear me well? Welcome, I can hear you well. Is this Stacey Abrams? <laughs> no, um, I, I go to the gym every day. And <laughs> oh, no, you ain't Stacey Abrams. <laughs> now, if you said you used to get some Popeyes, I'm like, oh, okay, well, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, Wiley, I, I'm just your political mind is just fascinating to me <laughs> and uh, as a mayor those are some stiff sentences 
that you would be standing out. <laughs> like, wow. Um, was it 60 years for a Snickers bar? No. Um, I love the law and order of it all. You're you're a law and order guy. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> I feel I'm, you. I'm glad that I could make you laugh because Thank I you. was worried. Um, I saw how emotional you yeah, were. Yeah, I was very emotional about all of the, you know, about um, Mr. Pelosi. I haven't, I haven't seen you this emotional since the Will Smith slap. Um, <laughs> and you know, the tears. I, I, I didn't want to see that. Um, but I, I appreciate the plan that you have for Stacey Abrams and. Um, I don't know if you've already contacted her or if your people have contacted her to see if you can be her campaign st strategist, um, strategist. I think that, that would be a wonderful opportunity for you and for him. Absolutely. And I think that with that idea, it would have garnered so much media attention. She would have dominated the news cycles. Uh, they would have been talking about her in comedy sketches. They'd be like, oh my gosh, I'm Stacey Abrams. I'm on the trailer. Vote for me for governor. It would have done so much for her mm -hmm. campaign uh, with the black men because people don't understand black men have been leaving the Democratic Party or they're not been voting. They're, they're still the second highest voting block, 80 some percent, but they every election cycle at least a couple of points they've been losing you know black men and they should be very worried because you know black mm -hmm. women is very good if they vote then they're, they're 90 some percent but black men in the 80s if they keep losing that's a problem for the democrats and i think that Stacey should have done something to cater towards black men and cater towards men period and i think hitting the gym would have been different because no other candidate i don't think done something like that yeah, I, I'm in total agreement. I think that would have been amazing. Uh, oh, amazing, as a matter of fact. And I still think that you need to hit her up and and see about that. Maybe she's lost this one, like you said. You know, she should have hit the gym. Absolutely. But, you know, maybe it's not too late. You know, maybe next time. And, yeah. and going and, you know, get her ready now. You know, maybe you could start filming some stuff for her Instagram. And, and uh, you know, so that people know that she's coming for the next time. Absolutely. Absolutely. But thank you. Yeah. Thank you so very much, sister, for thank calling you. in. <laughs> thank, thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, bye-bye. <laughs> it's so good, uh, people, uh, for calling in. And um, I thank you so very much for Stacey. Uh, not Stacey. I'm sorry. Nancy Pelosi was supported the Voters' Right Act. And many people don't know that she got that through, you know, with the support of the the Congressional Black Caucus. A lot of bills have been passed under Stacey Abrams, but the Senate, un unfortunately, they're lacking their support. Uh, but if we don't have any more callers, we're done with this. We put on a good show today. If you don't like it, hey, it's my opinion. Okay? If you don't like my opinion, uh, it's okay. Okay? But it's our definitely our thoughts. Of, we would be in Atlanta uh, I, I would definitely be putting and seeing what's going on in Atlanta, and uh, we definitely gonna see it about that. So if you're in Atlanta, if you want to link up with me, send me an email at wileyshow at gmail dot com. Uh, thank you so very much. I am hungry. Uh, are you always on a good show? Thank you, Pelosi supported anti. -Wiz. Thank you so very much. We got some Nancy Pelosi fans here. So Pelosi supported Juneteenth. Thank you so very much. This was fun. Thank you so very much, T High Mess History. Thank you. It was good. It was a good show. And 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 people don't get mad at me. I'm getting emails from the um um from the Stacey Abrams people just saying that was rough. It's my opinion. You know, it's my opinion, and these are my predictions. Lord, I'm in Atlanta, but I don't know about meeting you. It's okay if you don't want to meet me. It's okay. It's okay. But I, I'm going to be in, in Atlanta shopping because I, I don't think I can wear a 3XL shirt, but I'm going to be in Atlanta shopping for a 4X shirt, 4XL shirt. I'm going to be in Atlanta, Atlanta shopping. Um, definitely going to see my girl, Monique. I haven't seen her in a while. Uh, I haven't seen her in a while. And um, definitely going to see Monique because I think Monique is an incredible artist. And if she's a credit horse, I heard that we got to put our phones away. Uh, I wanted to see a view a clip of the reality show featuring Wally, but I can't find it. Um, can y'all post a clip of that? I'm definitely gonna eat a big breakfast when I'm in, in Atlanta. I'm gonna eat, I'm gonna eat, 
I mean, yeah. And they got some other stuff to do in Atlanta, in Atlanta too. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm definitely going to eat good in Atlanta. <laughs> Go on rolling my platform with these talking points. <laughs> <laughs> you think he gonna drag me? Okay, thinking about Roland Martin. Do we have his book, White Fear: How the Brown of America Making White Folks Lose Their Minds? I purchased the book. I'm gonna listen to the Audible book on the plane. Uh, we definitely gonna do something on stage share, you guys. But I, oh, we got another caller seven seven three six. Is this Stacey Abrams? Absolutely not. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hello. Absolutely not. <laughs> I just, I came on late, so I want to know what exactly happened. Excuse me? You saying her husband was attacked or were they both attacked? What happened? Uh, oh, Stacey Abram, I'm sorry. Nancy Pelosi, husband, the Speaker of the House, husband was attacked at 2.30 in the morning on last night. Uh, he had to get surgery. Um, and he was attacked by uh, a, a male, uh, a white man, and by a hammer. He the, the guy had a hammer, and he was attacked. But you know, thank you for tuning in. I didn't, you didn't hear the news, so where were so you all seen day? The hammer. You said you said he what? Seen the hammer? No, that's what the news was reporting. That's what I'm reporting on the channel. That's so what he didn't reporting. see the hammer. He said he was attacked by a hammer. That's that's what the the report. A guy with the hammer. Yeah, a guy with a hammer. That's what they're saying on the news report. Again, I oh, was not snap. there. Well, they about to start taking them hammers off the shelves. Y'all better get your hammers before this Halloween weekend is over. Y'all better get these hammers out here before Tuesday now. Yeah, so that's what definitely. Was. But you didn't hear the news. What were y'all let out? Maybe no, because I no, watched no, the no, news I didn't all hear no all. News because I wasn't watching any news because I was working all day. Wow, they don't have television? Maybe because where I am, I see news all the time. So, no, yeah. No, okay. no, maybe because me working yesterday, okay, first of all, what was he doing out at 2.30? No, morning? he was at home. He, the guy broke into his house. The guy broke into his house. Oh, see, you didn't say that. Oh, oh you didn't say that, okay. The house and they just beat his ass, so where was his wife at? His wife was in Washington. You know, she's the Speaker of the House. Oh, so she wasn't there with him. So no. oh, this is just a ploy to get some votes and shit. No, I don't think that's so a ploy. So he was in his house, and he didn't have nothing to protect himself. And he's, he didn't hear the burglars come in or nothing. They ain't got no laws or nothing. I, I don't know. I, 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 I'm just asking you. I, I don't know. I don't know. That's so many good questions. He's, he's He's in his eighties. He's 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 a senior. He's a senior citizen, <laughs> and so I don't know. I don't know if they didn't have, and maybe they did. Have, I don't. I don't know if they I had security. I, I don't know. I don't know if they had security. <laughs> anything like that. But they. Because I definitely don't know. You right. I ain't got. Okay. No time for TV oh, okay. Friday. But thank you, it's, thank it's you, man. Saturday morning now, so now I know. So they broke into his house. They had no alarms and stuff. I and don't, I, I, I can't. Him. I can't speak on that. I don't know that. But man. it happened to be a hammer. So he's alive. He's right? alive. He he's in the hospital. He just had. He had surgery, and he he is alive. Um, uh huh. Oh, that that is so sad because they care more about this ninja, and he's not even in politics. Forget about what his wife is doing. But what about all the people that go through abuse all the time? Ma'am, they talk about domestic violence. Um, what about those people? Ma'am, what about laws for that? None, none of none they have of laws against domestic violence. What you talking? They no, have they laws against that. They have laws yes, in they, place they, that directly do that. They do have they laws they, against people in domestic violence. Like I said, no, they no, do no, have no, laws. No, they have order protections. No, 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 no. They don't they have laws for domestic violence, man, and, and all, all the attention is on him, but not on ma the scamming ass wife. Though his wife is what not a scammer. His scamming ass his, wife, his, yes, ma'am, ma'am, ma ma his fucking scammer. I, I, I got it. Uh, and she's uh, not uh, for the people. And stop saying black people. She's not for the people at all. She what What do you mean that she's a, sca a scammer? Can you give an example? Like can you give it? Get hold on, ma'am, 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 ma'am. What's an example? What's an example of her being a scammer? What have she scammed? She scanned everybody about every fucking thing because Nancy Pelosi ain't for the good of the people. How about that? She's for the good of her motherfucking self. Apparently not her husband. So too bad her attempt to kill him didn't work, right? Oh, they just broke in with a hammer. What kind of shit is that? If y'all believe that in today's world, it's something wrong with y'all. For real. 
All right. Well, we thank you so very Did much. You call, call, call. Did you see him? Did you see his injuries? Did you see him? Oh, yeah. Well, they broke in with a hammer. He just needs some surgery. He'll be all right. And y'all oh. believe that shit? All right. Man, thank you. Please. While you got the game effed up, and whoever believed that is crazy. All right. Y'all, well, y'all got the nerve to believe that. She's trying to get the boats up, and y'all falling into this crap. Well, ma'am, oh, ma'am, well, ma'am, her husband, uh, ma'am, ma'am, oh, her husband, she's, uh, ma'am, 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 oh, ma'am, her husband, her, her husband, her, her, hello, her, her husband was attacked people. and stuff like that, and that's just how it is, ma'am. You don't have to understand it. I don't believe that Nancy Pelosi is a scammer. Nancy Pelosi have passed a lot of bills that help Black America. The Voters' Right Act, um, they have passed that in the House. They have passed the uh, the act to actually to give or uh, actually to make insulin uh, cheaper. They passed that. So a lot of bills under uh, Nancy Pelosi have passed that will actually help African American people. But the Senate, uh, unfortunately, they're not doing too well because we only got a is only we only got a fifty one. You know, we don't have we it's like what 51 or 49 or something like that. We don't have a, a, a majority like that in, in the Senate. So she had passed a lot of stuff to help African American people. And so y'all don't know a lot of y'all didn't do your research. She's done a lot to help African American people. She have done a lot to help us and in all a lot of bills that have passed. You can just Google the bills that have passed under Nancy Pelosi leadership, and you will be surprised that it actually helped. Uh, African American people, and I, that's something that uh, people should realize. I don't believe that Nancy Pelosi is a scammer. She's not a scammer, uh, and if she did scam, she would be in prison. So she's definitely not a scammer, especially how she be coming on, on to the Democrats, uh, especially how she been going after Republicans. So they would definitely be trying to get her as well. But thank y'all so very much for tuning in. But if anybody else want to call in, the number is still open. All right, the number is still up. But we we don't try to do profanity over here. I know that caller. I think she's under the influence, so she cussed. So we typically don't allow uh, uh, profanity because I don't use profanity over here on YouTube. Now, stay shared. I use profanity. All right. Thank you so very much. Anybody else want to call in? Okay. All right. Yeah, definitely be under the influence. You know how that goes. People be under the influence. They be cussing and all that stuff like that. But that person have their oh, let me do an unboxing. Give me a second. So let me see. Somebody bought me some tarot cards. Uh, ah, tarot cards. Thank you. Tarot. I don't know nothing about the tarot cards. You know they're going to say I'm copying off somebody. Okay. But I would definitely... uh, Give me a second. Okay, tarot cards. I don't know why they got me the tarot cards because people going to say I'm trying to be like somebody. And now they got me the tarot card. Hold on, y'all. Tarot card. All right. So what's in here? Oh, a 
USB charger for the car. What's in here? And this is from AKA Don TV, D A W N TV. I don't need. Oh, a shirt. Oh, a shirt. A Monique shirt. Ah! Monique. Ah! Monique. Yes! A Monique shirt! <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh! AKA Don TV said, hello, Wally. Enjoy watching your show. Keep up the good work. Yes. Keep up a good work. Shout out to AKA Don TV for that way. They got me in a 3XL and a 4XL. Okay. No, it's not on it's not on the floor. I got boxes. It's on top of boxes. It's on top of boxes. This is so nice. <laughs> ain't no way, ain't no way I'll win. That's a holy jump. I don't know if I'm gonna win to the show. I'm not gonna win to the show. <laughs> I love Monique. Okay. Oh, it got me some money. Yes, it came down to me. Hello, y'all. We doing unboxing. Oh, man. Give me a second. Okay. And so I got the water and the popcorn. Strawberry watermelon natural flavor for my water. The Wiley Show. Okay. Oh, thank you. Yes. Golden Oaks cookies. The producers love me.
Do y'all think I should wear that Monique shirt? Why y'all? I'm gonna wear that Monique. Y'all care what y'all talk about? The tarot cards. Okay, I'm not really into tarot, but I'm going to study it and do something for the tarot. Yeah, somebody get, gave me the cookies. And I got some popcorn in my trunk and some water. <laughs> if that's your dolphin, you need to join Stacy at Planet Fitness for a day. Yes, I'm aware. And then I'm going to have a shirt under it. So just in case if I can't wear it, I'm going to wear it. I love Monique. 7736, you there? Yes, I'm here. Of course, I'm here. Okay, I was on the unboxing, but thank you so very much uh, for the support of the producers. Uh, we just renewed our PO box, so we have it for another six months. So if y'all want to contribute to the show, y'all definitely can contribute to First of all, Wiley, I've been here when you didn't even have 300 freaking subscribers, Wiley. Don't w try welcome. this with me. You need welcome. to calm down. Well, only thing yeah, is, we, we just so we don't do the cussing. I used to call in all the time, you know? Yes. But then you was too far of TK behind for me. You feel okay. me? So mm -hmm. I had to fall back a little bit. Just a little bit. But don't do that, okay? Because I've always been here. <laughs> I love you. Thank you. And then you going to mute me like that? Like, because you didn't agree with the Pelosi thing. And then at the same time, you talking crap. It was a like, profanity. Oh, well, we're not doing the cursing. And that's fine. I'm like, okay, well, I'm not doing the cursing, not knowing, but you got me on mute. So I'm in the chat, like, okay, well, it's the me, Barry. Okay. Like, you know, like, stop playing. It's okay. Like, don't do that. Well, welcome to the Wiley Show. Oh, the, oh, uh, but it, I mean, you could at least say the producer is under the influence. You didn't even say that. You know what I mean? Like you really try to play me. Well, I be like, stop my, it. My my apologies. Like, stop You're welcome. Like I wasn't your last caller tonight. Like stop oh, playing thank, with well, me. thank you for your support. Thank you so very Just much. Because I was telling. You, okay, so can I get back to what I was talking about now? That I'm not cursing. You already about said the Pelosi. You already people. you already said what you said about. We're gonna close the show, but thank you no, so very I much. No, not because you you, you said everything. And you know you cut me you, off. You said everything. No, I did not say everything because if I said everything, you wouldn't have cut me off. Like right? you, 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 you already, you already, you, you are, you, you got, she got sixty seconds. What else you want to say? Oh, sixty seconds. Yes, ma'am. Oh wow. Okay, like I was saying, because we've been on the show for two hours, you called in late. Well, first of all, I came on the chat late. I didn't know you were live. Yeah, because you ain't on the text list. Are you on? You know are, what you are, do? Are, because are you, are you, before you, you used to have the number before where you would text everybody when I, you was going to live. I, I, I have mean? that. I have that. And no, that's a new one. That's the, that's the that's original. no, that's the new. We have the new one because the new one I can send it out I to everybody at that. everybody at everybody at the same like time. I said, I was doing this forever. Like I've been here while. Yes. Don't tell me that's a new one. Like so said, get the new one so you can get the text so you can get the text at the same. So you can get the text at the same time. This is the new one. Exactly. That's a new one, like I said. So it okay. is what it is. Anywho, you asked the question, I gave you an answer. That's a new one. I have the old one. It's not my fault. You know, they there was a mix up or whatever. Anywho, that's on you, Wiley. That's on your side. That ain't got nothing to do with the producers on okay. this side. Go with your okay? sixty your sixty seconds start now. Go ahead. Okay. Now, um, First of all, before I could do my 60 seconds, I need to know why you muted me other than you said I was cursing. Well, I, I muted you because I had to, I had, I, I, it was a segment that I had to do my unboxing and you interrupted that. And oh, so, please, why are you lying? Because you was about to 
about to hang up. But I, okay, all right, all right, whatever. You could keep that. All right, so like I was saying, with any other politician, they always have security for not just the politician, for their families as well. So do not be fooled, people, by all this crap that's going on. They just like and, and Wiley is one of them people, even though I know he's a um independent agent. And y'all should know, of course, he is an independent agent. He does not work for anybody. He just, you know, says what he says and does what he does. So he's an independent agent. So he's not really attached to anyone. You know what I mean? But the point was that he's giving y'all false information right now. Because first of all, everybody would have security. The whole family, especially the immediate family, would have security. For any politician, that's automatically guaranteed. That's one of the reasons why a lot of people go into politics. But like I was saying, uh, before when he cut me off, what I was saying was a lot of these politicians are only politicians because they didn't cut it. Like, they didn't make the bar when it came to being lawyers. So they're all liars is what I was saying when he cut me off. Okay? That's what I was trying to let y'all know. Don't get it twisted. Don't listen to his lies. And then he try to play me, talk about stuff. Oh, well, where's the TV? You don't got no TV where you at. First of all, sweetie, I've been busy all day. And at the end of the day, my thing is this. Was right is right and was wrong is wrong. And Wiley is absolutely wrong when it comes to this. Because there would have been security for all of the immediate family. Just like anybody else that's in politics. Especially those that are in D.C. So don't listen to Wiley when it comes to none of that. He tried to play it on my, oh, I'm cursing, I'm under the influence. No, ain't no under the influence over here. Not the night, boo. Thank you. And if that's my 60 seconds, then so be it. But anywho, we, I could go on for days about this without even seeing the news. First of all, you don't need to watch the news to understand that. First of all, what did Trump tell y'all? Fake news, okay? Fake news. And if y'all didn't want to believe it, oh well, they've been giving y'all fake news probably since the day y'all was born. Believe that. Because Barry White gonna tell you the truth. A.K.A. happy. That's why I'm always happy because I ain't got time for the crime. Especially in politics. This stuff goes on and it's been going on for centuries without the TV. Wiley, thank you very much. You don't need no TV. To see the crime going on around you, like I, 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 it just is what it is. And then why they always want to talk about Pookie and Ray Ray? Why not Pelosi and Pelosi? Huh? Hmm. Yeah. What about those politicians that you love so much? Talk about that, Wiley. Hmm. What about the gross negligence going on and people that aren't even that high up? All right. When it well, comes well, to people you. you going out to vote for. Because when it comes to going to vote, people, that's what people need to do. Thank Not you. For the president. You understand what I'm saying? Y'all need to vote for even the chair. Thank when you. It comes to Hold on one second. One second, ma'am. Hold on one second. One second, ma'am. One second. Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. One you understand second. What I'm saying? Eight, 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 nine, eight, nine, seven, eight. Call her. You're live on the air. Here we go. Here we eight, go. nine, seven, eight. Keep me on the Yo. line. Keep Hello. Keep me on the line. Thank you. Yo. Welcome to the Wally Show. Hey man, the shit you push is not cool. I'm tired of all you faggot ass. Uh, uh-uh, see, see, you got the profanity. If you go to try to drag the Wally show, you can't use the profanity. All right. All right. Thank y'all so very much. You you can't use the profanity. Eight nine seven eight. You faggot. Uh 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 uh. uh, 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 uh. <laughs> This man, that gotta be the man that called in earlier. <laughs> what the fuck going on? I'm gonna need some security. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> you fucking pussy. <laughs> I put both of them backstage. They talking to each other. <laughs> hold on, hold on, let's see. Great to that fucking community. (laughs) (laughs) 
7736? Yes, I'm still here, Wiley. <laughs> Did you hear all that disrespect? Yeah, I'm mad. Yeah, because why would somebody call me on that? You saw what now? That, no, I said no. I said I'm that's messed up. I said because why would somebody call in on some BS like that? <laughs> like all that name calling and all that, that, that that's too much. Like for what? <laughs> call like, where you call it from? Are you you call it from Atlanta? Am I calling from Atlanta? No, I'm not calling from Atlanta, but I am calling from the East Coast, as you can see from the East. Uh, okay. From the, from the chat and all that. Like, yeah. I told you it would be too cold for you in Atlanta, you know, just wearing that t-shirt. Like, I don't know how you're going to do that in November, but all right. Is it cold in Atlanta? You know, it, you know it is cold on the East Coast. Let me see the weather for tomorrow. I, I'm probably going to wear, like, let me see the weather. Oh, so you're going to be in Atlanta tomorrow. It was actually today, but let me see. Let me see where it's going to be. Oh, well, you're right about that. It is almost 3 o'clock. Yes, yes, right. today, yes, yeah, because you, where you at, absolutely. A few seconds and it will be 3. So you got that right. Yes. Are you okay? I am, I am, I am. I just don't like the propaganda of it all. You know what I mean? But I mean, it happens all the time. It happens every day, so I get it. This is why, you know, you got me with the whole, oh, well, yo, no television. Yeah, everybody thought that was funny. But of course, even if I didn't have an actual television, you know, I could watch anything I want to watch on either of my phones, correct? Correct. Or we thank you. We we thank you so. We, we, or, we thank you. Or tablets we or thank, whatever. Either well, those we, devices. Well, I would tell. I, I, I'm glad that you got your breaking news from Wiley, and we just agreed to disagree. All right. No, 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 no. It's not that. It's not that. I mean, I'm fine. I'm good. I'm not going to be out of here because I have the close of the show. But thank you. But we thank you, and I thank you for your support. Uh, make sure I'm definitely. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you for your support. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You are definitely welcome. My thing is, I just wanted the people to know that. Yes, ma'am. You know, they need to look more into it. Like they need to think logical. They need to think for themselves. Like just because yes. you follow somebody on a certain site or whatever, or you see this stuff popping up on the news, you always do your research and think for yourself. Thank you. you. Get what I'm saying. Thank that's you. And that good. that's a good point. We're gonna close out with you with that. That's Thank all. you. Thank you so very much for your support. All right, well, you have a great night. All Enjoy right. everybody. Love y'all. <laughs> okay. All right. No, I, I'm not gonna go to sleep. Um, I'm just gonna wash my clothes and stuff like that. Um, but we greatly appreciate the support of the producers for calling in and giving their thoughts uh, about it. Hello. Hey, I wasn't done with you. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh man <laughs> oh man. <laughs> what is going oh <laughs> Oh man, 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 man. <laughs> he said, Woo child, the freaking comes out at night. Last they see rather tall. <laughs> oh man. Oh man, man, man. Woo. Thank y'all so very much. I think that was all the gifts that I had. Also, no, that's some other stuff. 
I got my pan size, so I will announce that on the next episode. But I greatly appreciate the support of the producers uh, for y'all great support. Uh, we'll probably call that caller for station head. Okay. Thank you so very much. Um, thank you for the shirts. Uh, I um, just thank you for the support, man. I'm gonna definitely take my coat. So just in case if it's trying to be chilly and stuff like that. But thank y'all for the support. Also, I want to give a special shout out to the producers. Y'all had came through. Not only did y'all give, just but y'all definitely have done that. Okay. Yes, we are so pleased with your gift. Thank you. I'm I'm definitely pleased with it. Definitely. Definitely pleased with the definitely pleased with the gift because y'all did it from your heart. Give me a second. We're gonna do the after show on station here. So my plan don't leave until a couple of hours. So I'm gonna do that then. Yeah. Give me a second. And we're going to open up the phone lines. Hold on. Give me a second. And make sure y'all subscribe to the show. Yeah, make sure y'all subscribe to the show. Anonymous, you live on air. Hey, good morning. Hi, good morning. How are you, love? You said what? How are you, love? I, I'm so, so I'm live. Are you live? You I here? Know I know you live. Yes, I'm live on the show. Who is this? Yeah, I know. I'm watching you. Oh, welcome. <laughs> You're looking very handsome this Thank morning. you. Thank you. I just call you to say hi. Oh, you just call and say hi. Oh, well, thank you so much. You know who this is? I know who this is. I know this is mouth open. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, have a safe flight. I can't wait to hear about your review on the show. Yes, I'm gonna wear. I'm gonna wear. Oh. I'm definitely gonna wear that Monique shirt. You think I should wear that Monique shirt? What you think? No, don't wear the shirt. Wear it. Wear it on your show, but not to her show. Okay, I'm gonna listen to you because you know I'm gonna wear it on my show while I do my review. There we go. <laughs> yes, wear it when you come back and you're doing your review on the show. Wear it. I would do it. Okay. All right, be safe and don't do anything that I wouldn't do in Atlanta. Okay. <laughs> oh, right, I, I'm not. I'm, I'm gonna have fun. Thank you. All right, y'all. All right. We we gonna take this troll caller on station here. So let me drop this station here. Y'all don't want to miss that because this troll caller, I this troll caller on station here. So make sure and we we live. Is you calling me back to cuss me out? Is I'm on the show.